Hey, what's up guys? This is Fab and welcome back to my channel. Now for this video, I will be discussing the ArriveCan application. What are the questions? What are the parts? Um, what's the purpose of the ArriveCan application? I will give my tips and um, yeah, it's a step-by-step -step guide on how to answer the ArriveCan application. So if you are interested in coming to Canada and you need more information about the ArriveCan app, then this is the video for you. So keep on watching. So in this video, I will be giving out tips as we go along to the different questions under a RevCan application and I will be flashing it here so that you could um, understand what I'm saying. Yeah, and if you have further questions, you could always comment down in the comment section below. So let's start! So prior to everything, when you download your ArriveCan application, make sure that it is in the latest version because um, what's going to happen is when you answer the ArriveCan, and then you update the application, everything that you answered will be gone. You need to answer the forms again. So make sure that you have the latest version. So I have this on my phone. Um, let's start. All right. So this is the like the first page that you will see on the ArriveCan app, right? Um, down below is the reason why you should answer the ArriveCan application. So ArriveCan is intended for use by incoming travelers to Canada whether by air, land, or marine. Please select the option that aligns to your planned point of entry in order to submit your traveler information as required by law and indicated by a mandatory field. So yeah, it is mandatory that you should answer a RIPGAN uh, when you are planning to go to Canada, whether it's by air, by land, or by marine. Yeah, there are links here. If you need more information about these topics, you could always just click the links. Click start. Okay. All right. The first question is, um, how are you entering into Canada? So by air, by land, or by marine? So we will go there by air. Flight details. So enter the details of your planned arrival to Canada within the next 72 hours, three days. If your trip is not within 72 hours, come back and complete your submission later. So you should only answer the form within 72 hours. For me, I'm gonna arrive in um, August 12. You can start answering by August 9. Okay, so country of original departure. So in my case, I came from the Philippines. Um, arrival airport will be YVR. YVR or Vancouver International Airport. So you're just going to choose which airport you're going to land in. Airline um, through the Philippine Airlines. Flight number PR116 and then date of arrival. I'm just going to set it to, for example, tomorrow, August 22. All right, done. You should click next, so the arrow. Um, is your travel related to any of the following purposes? If you're not part of these. You should click no. Okay, so here, what is the purpose of your travel? So are you a returning citizen or permanent resident? Under family reunification, um, a foreign national who tends to enter Canada to be with an immediate or extended family member. Um, are you a foreign worker or are you a study or international student? Study, anyway. And also, you could have... Um, you could go to Canada via Compassionate Grounds. Um, in my case, let's just put um, student. So let's add our passport. All right, so those traveling together must quarantine in the same location for the duration of their quarantine, including the stay at the same government-approved hotel. So as of August 9, it's not mandatory anymore for you to have like the government-approved hotel stay. So um, you could just um, prepare for uh, the home or where you are staying for the quarantine, for the 14-day quarantine. Uh, okay, so in this page, what we're going to do is we're going to add our passport. So let's click add another traveler. So here are the different travel documents. Um, I think most of us will use the passport, but there are other options. So when you click passport, it's going to open this um, like, what, I don't know how to explain it, but this is how it looks like. And what you're going to do is you're going to scan your passport. 
like this and it will automatically put your details and also you can add another traveler with you um they should be like a dependent or a spouse but when you're both adults and you're traveling for different purposes like should have a separate um, arrive can application please provide your primary telephone number and email address where you can be reached while in canada you need to put a canadian number here so have you received a covid19 vaccine here it is um, it is not required to be fully vaccinated against covid19 to entry or to, for entry into canada your responses to these questions will have no bearing on your entry in canada your vaccination status may determine applicability of certain border measures and will be confirmed at the border by a Canada Border Services Officer. Mas magandang fully vaccinated kang pupunta sa Canada kasi um, some like exemptions will apply to you. Like you don't need to have your 14-day quarantine. You don't have to have your on-arrival swab test. But I'm just going to share something to you. There is a study they're conducting so randomly they choose people who needs to have their swab so it's it's a research um by canada um so if you're randomly selected to have your on arrival swab then you need to comply so since i received my vaccine let's click yes and then um for for vaccination here are the questions so we need to provide a proof of vaccination which COVID-19 vaccine did you receive for your first dose? So again, there are a lot of choices, but the only accepted vaccines for um, Canadian travelers are Pfizer, AstraZeneca, Moderna, and Janssen. Let's just choose Pfizer. Um, in which country did you receive your first dose? So I received it back home in the Philippines. Date of your first COVID-19 vaccination dose, let's just um, assume June 15, for example. And so if you have Pfizer, AstraZeneca, and Moderna, there's a second dose. So let's click yes. And then again, um, Pfizer, travelers, oh, which country, Philippines, and then what's the date of your second dose? Uh, let's say June, no, July 15. Let's say July 15. Done. Here is the part where you upload your proof of vaccination. So upload a file or photo or use your camera's phone to take a photo of your vaccination receipt. And then um, when you're just using the same vaccination card, just do just repeat the process for the second option. So just take a picture of your vaccination card again for the second dose. So make sure that it's readable so that uh, there will be no problems. Okay, so these are the mandatory travel requirements. Number one, five years and above are required to have like uh, provide a proof of molecular COVID-19 test. So in my other video, I have explained um, what COVID test you should be doing. So. Um, I'll put the link here or down in the description box. Um, number two, uh, a suitable quarantine plan for 14 days starting on the day that they enter Canada. So you need to have a place. Regardless if you're fully vaccinated, you still need to have your quarantine plan. Unless exempted, individuals will have required to take another COVID-19 test on arrival on Canada and on day 8 of their quarantine period. Alright, so travelers 5 years of age or older must show a proof of molecular COVID-19 test results prior to boarding a flight to Canada. The, neg the swab test should be negative and the sample taken should be no more than 72 hours before the scheduled departure of my flight. Um, if you had a positive COVID-19 test, um, it should be collected 14 to 90 days prior your departure. Since you were infected by COVID, you still have the immunity, you have the antibodies, um, so you don't need to have a negative swab results and you don't need vaccination to be exempted from quarantine. Uh, which country did you receive your negative molecular COVID-19 test from? from the Philippines. 
As a traveler coming into Canada, you need to declare all countries you visited 14 days prior to your entry. So in here, they're asking if you visited another country aside from the Philippines. So I answered no. All right, so the next part is the quarantine plan questionnaire. Do you have an accommodation where you can quarantine for 14 days or possibly longer? So quarantine means staying home and avoiding situations where you could come in contact with others who did not travel with you. So if you're traveling, for example, if you're tra I'm traveling with my dad, if you're traveling with a mother, um, like family member or friend, uh, you could have like the same facility or the same room. You could stay in the same room um, before you could stay in the same hotel. Can you avoid all contact with other people in the household with whom you did not travel or have no guests? So in here, they're asking if you will have like the necessities like food, water, um, medication, heat, if it's cold, um, without even the quarantines. Are there at-risk people at the location where you plan to quarantine? At-risk people are those who are at risk of more severe diseases like People who are 65 years or older have underlying medical conditions or have a compromised immune system. For question number five, so in your quarantine plan, you should not be exposing yourself to the following people because they work in hospitals or long-term care facilities where, where there's a lot of vulnerable people. Um, is your place of quarantine a group living environment and does not um, is it currently housed to different families? So your quarantine place should not be in a group living facility um, where you cannot separate yourself from others. So that's why it's called quarantine. You need to self-isolate. Okay, so your final quarantine location. And then you put the exact address. So I will put my address here. Let's just say Fairmont. Vancouver all right and then <clears throat> sometimes it automatically fills up the other um, information like okay for the last step this is the COVID-19 self-assessment or kind of like the health declaration form are you or any other travelers listed on this form experiencing the following symptoms fever and cough fever and difficulty of breathing so and yeah that's it if you're done you just click submit and then you wait until your arrive camp form is submitted and yeah and here you have your receipt and that's it guys uh, that's how you answer the arrive can application form um, if you have further questions don't hesitate to comment down in the comment section below I'd love to hear your thoughts and um, I personally printed out my own um, travel quarantine plan aside from the one in the right hand just in case so if you want a copy of that Just comment down in the comment section below as well. I hope this video helped you if it did uh, Don't forget to click the thumbs up uh, Subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell for more future videos and I'll see you on the next one Stay fabulously brave and beautiful. Bye